You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you guys for joining us for this episode 929. Hope you're having a great start to your new year. Happy New Year. Indeed. We're very excited uh, to bring you this show on behalf of LoomCube, who has sent us a few LoomCube Airs to see if we can you know, get them on a, a Mavic 2 and on a Phantom. Really excited to be nice. testing that, testing some new drones coming out soon. Also, really excited, we are going to be expanding here at DroneU to get content out faster for the membership side and focusing more on providing content to members rather than our uh, entire audience because we want to serve and provide hospitality to those people who support us. So we're going to be really focusing on that this year, and our goal is to launch 12 new classes this year. Our goal was the same last year, but we only launched 10. We suck! Fail. So we're going to try to do better this and year. And they're going to be better. Yeah, not the just quality more. that we started off with is not going to be the quality represented from uh, last year on out. We're learning. We're human. Constantly learning. That's but a good thing, though. Def- absolutely a good thing and definitely trying to bring you guys the best. Totally. But we need to hear from you. What do you need? Well, we kind of already have that like on lock. Should I explain what, you know? No, I, I shouldn't. No, nope, 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 nope. nope. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys, well, let's go ahead and hear today's Under question. Promise, uh, over-deliver. Yeah, let's hear today's question. And again, thank you to our friends at Loom Cube. Hi, guys. It's Joe. Hey, just quickly want to say thank you so much for all you guys do for us. Your podcast is very informative and just as entertaining at the same time. And um, I find being a member extremely, extremely valuable. My question today is looking at getting a Z30 for a M210. And it's a little apprehensive with it saying that the image sensor on it's only um, two megapixels. And the sales guy keeps saying, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's all in the optics. And um, just would feel a little bit more at ease with me. Paul, I know you've had some working with this. Um, What's your opinion on it? Is it as great as he says it is? Do I have anything to worry about? That's the only thing that I think can provide the quality of zoom that I need. But when you go from all the hubbub about how great the Phantom 4 with its 20 megapixel sensor versus the Z30 with the 2 megapixel sensor, I know glass can do a lot, but can it do that much? I don't know. What's your thoughts? Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate the question. Um, Guys, as the new year gets started, you're going to be refocusing on your business And a lot of questions are going to come to mind. I want you to send those in to the show so that we can address them and help you. Askadroneu.com is where you can do that. And never forget that what you're thinking, so it was somebody else and probably a lot of other people. So take a few minutes, go to the site, askadroneu.com, and let us know what you're thinking. Z30. Um, I would say that the answer to his question uh, goes back to, you know, what are the deliverables or what is the flexibility of deliverables you wish to uh, accomplish because um, mapping with the Z30 is never going to happen, at least not practically speaking or efficiently speaking. That being said, you know, the amount of zoom on a Z30 is almost hard to conceptualize, and it's mm. extremely difficult to compare apples and oranges here. The reason you have a 2 megapixel sensor on the Z30 is because a sensor has to be so small in order to fit that huge set of lenses that are inside of that Z30 housing. I mean... Just think about, you know, how much you need to fit in there as far as lenses are concerned to get the zoom that it has. We have a video, by the way, on YouTube that you guys should check out. Um, It's a Z30 review. In that review, you can actually see where we're flying about half a mile away from a hemp conference that's going on. And I literally (laughs) zoomed in so that the whole frame of my picture was someone's hand buying something. It's incredible. That's how much Zoom there is. We played with it at the fly-in 
couple years ago too, right? Didn't John bring no, one? Was that, that was something else? Different camera. Yeah. That was a different camera. Okay. Actually, no, we did play with that you at were the academy. Showing me at the yeah. academy the power of that thing. Yeah. So if you're doing you know persistent surveillance, if you're doing crowd monitoring, that's a great system. If you're doing inspections where you have like a cell phone tower on a power pole or with a nest. That's another great, great example to use that camera. But frankly, there aren't too many uses for the Z30 camera the way that it's set up. And I've heard other people make the argument, Rob, that, you know, okay, well, if I have a 20 megapixel on a Mavic, I can just fly closer and get the same detail. But in, in all honesty, people are flying the Z30 um, because of how far away you can fly from subjects, I mean, no one is going to hear you flying with a Z30. If you're a personal investigator and you don't want to be seen or heard, but you want data on where people are going and when, man, that's that's the machine to use, M600 and Z30. What else can you fly it on? You can fly it on M200, M210. Okay, but not either of the Inspires? No. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that there would be enough stability with the Inspire on a quadcopter versus a Hex with that camera. It actually makes me wonder now how the M210 handles it because controlling the Z30 is actually very difficult. Even if you are very accustomed to using the touch to move the camera feature, mm-hmm. it's still very difficult. Yeah. And it does, I mean, you know, think about it. People don't understand how hard it is to control a drone with a minimal amount of zoom. If you ever get a chance to fly a Mavic 2 zoom, just zoom in all the way and try to fly around and see how much it messes with your sense of spatial awareness. It's really, really interesting. In addition, every movement is exaggerated on the end of that camera because think about it. You're turning your camera from, let's say, like a Mm. small ratchet into like a three-foot-long ratchet, right? You're getting all that extra leverage, right? Mm -hmm. Well, with that... (laughs) Nice analogy. That that same leverage, though, is what's shaking the the hell out of your camera because you're zoomed in so far. So people have a really hard time kind of understanding that. And I would say, could you fly a Mavic 2 Pro close enough to get the detail that you would get in a Z30? Not really. Again, this the answer to this question really goes back to what's the, what's your deliverable? What are you really trying to acquire? What do you what are you trying to solve? Uh, because there are very few uses that, in my opinion, justify the cost of the Z30. Yeah, but like an inspection of a sophisticated power system. Yes. Right. I mean, you're not going to want to get right up into all that equipment and danger, essentially. I mean, you're there, True. it's going to be much easier with something like a Z30, obviously, than, True. than flying close with a, True. With a Mavic. So, but how, they're not cheap. What? They're they nine cost? grand. Nine grand. Yeah. Almost 10 if they're still the same price they were when they came out. So now, could you fly a Mavic to zoom at a certain distance away and get better quality pictures than the Z30? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, you'd still have to be within like 50 feet to get what the Z30 would get at probably 500 meters out. It's a little bit of a difference. Yeah, but you could map with the Mavic 2 Zoom. We're actually, uh, I'm downloading the data right now to compare the Mavic 2 Zoom mapping of the UH-60 helicopter Mm -hmm. versus um, the uh, Phantom 4 Pro. I just want to see if there's difference in point density. I want to see if there's a difference in detail. I actually already ran the same images of the UH-60 through Capture Reality and learned that Capture Reality needs fundamentally more data than Pix4D to create beautiful detailed point clouds of 3D objects to create 3D models, essentially. So so Pix4D is going to give you more flexibility then in that sense. Which I honestly didn't know until yeah. I tried that. Um, and then I gave the the Capture Reality Pro the imagery, and he's like, oh, well, you would have had to do you know more image acquisition. I'm like, well, then why would I use Capture Reality? I got to do more work to get the same damn product? Well, like, is there something that it gives that Pix4D doesn't, I guess is the question. What it does that Pix4D doesn't do is it outputs a high-res and a low-res 3D mesh Okay. So then you can import those into a program called XNormal, where then you essentially mix those two together. So you get a low or a high resolution, low bit file. So the file size is shrunk down mm-hmm. because Sketchfab charges you based off of how big the files are. Yep. Yeah, which you, you're familiar with. Um, so only because of me. Um, so that being said, it, it shrinks down the model, adds a little bit more contrast, a little bit more light. And it creates a much more beautiful looking model. Unfortunately, uh, as I found out from Bill, that doesn't really matter. Hmm. Because we're going for linear measurements. We're going for detail. 
We're not going for beauty. Well, in some cases, some people might be, though. So it really depends on, again, it always comes uh, down to what the uh, deliverable is, though. Not an accident reconstruction. As well, far no, as not an accident reconstruction. That particular reconstru- vertical. That particular example that you gave. That's true. But, but generally I do speaking. Ag- I do agree with you that, generally speaking, there are a lot of uses for creating beautiful models right. of areas, and capture reality would be good. What's a good example of that? Jim Miller, I hope you're listening. A staging and planning logistics of um, set locations. Yeah. They would be really good for that. Absolutely. So anyway, cool. but uh, on that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. I um, hope that answered your question, my friend. If you have a question, go to askadronu.com. Um, also, if you are not a member, you may want to become a member. And I also want to say huge thank you to everyone who has ordered the new uh, GCP landing pad. Uh, we are actually almost half sold out, and we haven't even received the shipment yet uh, from our manufacturer. So I, I'm stoked right now. Yeah, I know no, people are patiently waiting, and I and I appreciate that, and we're waiting as well. Uh, but I, I'm so ecstatic about the feedback for the landing pad. Yeah, it's been good. And if you're wanting a set, there's only a few left for this first. There's run. only like four or five left, right? Uh, something like that. A few. Wow. Yeah. So so get yours today. Hop in and get that. Uh, and on that bombshell, thanks again for listening. We really do appreciate it. Without you, we wouldn't be here, and we want to just get better and, and give you more information. So thanks for supporting us. Thanks for becoming a member of Drone U, and look forward to further expansion from Drone U this year. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone U. Drone <laughs> U.